So I want to start with this story about the UAW strike. You guys know that these employees did decide to go on strike. Uh, they decided to do a strategic uh, strike, which I was not familiar with at the time. And I was actually uh, not uh, positive about it. I, I actually thought it wasn't a good idea, but I admitted that I was wrong. And it turns out it has worked out for them doing it that way. And I am, I'm woman enough to admit when I'm wrong and come back and correct myself here. So I do want to let you know that they actually have reached a deal. And I'm also going to explain to you how this particular strike actually may impact Tesla, believe it or not. Let's go ahead and get into this article here. UAW members ratify big three deals that ended the 2023 auto strike. 64% of auto workers vote to approve contracts. So not a hundred percent, but the majority. So let's go ahead and get into this article here. Unionized auto workers across the U S have voted to approve the tentative contracts with Detroit's big three automakers that ended in a week long strike amid an unusual negotiation season. The United auto workers union announced on Monday that the majority of its members at Ford motor company Stellantis and general motors have voted to ratify four and a half year contract agreements that both sides declare historic. The deals reached at the end of October are similar among each of the big three, though each contract contains a few different components. The contracts include more than 20% wage increases, cost of living adjustments, retiree bonuses, shortening the time to reach top wages and more benefits. Can you imagine receiving a 20% wage increase right now? What would that do for you? If you received a 20% wage increase right now, what could you do with that money? You could probably pay off some bills, probably get ahead on some bills, right? If you had things like that you're kind of waiting to do, but you didn't have the money to do, let's say you had some home repairs that you needed to do, you could probably do that now. I, I've, I don't know anyone that has received a 20% wage increase. So that's actually pretty huge. Last week, it seemed UAW workers at GM could potentially vote down their tentative agreement, despite the majority of members at Ford and Stellantis voting in favor of their deals. However, GM workers narrowly voted in favor of the agreement. According to the final tallies reported last week, Final votes were cast at the remaining Ford and Stellantis local offices in the days to follow, and members ultimately approved all three deals. So last week, I did see that, that it looked like it was not going to pass. And I was a little nervous for them uh, because, again, like they have been on strike all of this time, so they're not getting paid. Uh, so I was nervous when I saw that it looked like it wasn't going to pass, but it did. It goes on to say UAW officials said on Monday that across all three car makers, 64% of members voted in favor of ratifying the deals, officially ending a six week strike amid a tense and unusual negotiation season. The strikes, which involved over 40,000 of UAW's 146,000 auto workers, were suspended after the tentative agreements were reached, but before they were ratified. We are pleased our team members have ratified the new agreement that rewards our employees, protects the future of business, and allows us to continue to provide good jobs in communities across the U.S. That is coming from General Motors CEO Mary Barra. Now, the new union contracts will take effect for all UAW auto workers and will expire in mid-2028. But UAW President Sean Fain isn't stopping there. The new aggressive and outspoken union leader is setting his sights on other non-unionized car makers and at other industries in which the UAW members work. Throughout the week-long auto strike, Fain, Fain maintained that the effort was meant to benefit both the auto workers and other middle-class workers outside of the industry. 
After finding success in his hands-on, boisterous and marketed approach to bargaining and striking, Fain has expressed interest in adding workers at Toyota, the world's top selling automaker and workers in other industries to the union and its self-declared fight against the billionaire class. So do you see what's happening here? Now, this is starting to spread to other auto companies. Now Toyota. And there's another one that I'm going to show you too that I'm going to get into. It goes on to say the members have spoken after years of cutbacks and months of stand up campaign and weeks on the picket line. We have turned the tide for the American auto worker. The stand up strike was just the beginning. The UAW is back to setting the standard. Now we take our strike muscle and our fighting spirit to the rest of the industries we represent and to the millions and non and to the millions of non union workers ready to stand up and fight a better way of life. So this turned out to be a win for them. So I was incorrect about the strategic strikes. I just thought it would be more beneficial if all of the auto workers from all of those plants walked out at the same time, but it appears the strategy that they chose did uh, uh, work. I wanna get into this clip here to show you uh, what happened at GM. Strikes that crippled the U.S. auto industry were ended by big deals on pay hikes. But those agreements needed ratification by union members. Now workers at General Motors have become the first to give their approval. They have voted to back the deal negotiated by the United Auto Workers Union. That will... By the way, I'm, I, I genuinely, seriously apologize that the uh, commentator here is not more enthusiastic. <laughs> this was one of the only clips I could find that I knew didn't have copyright. Um, but it's just funny, like he doesn't sound like enthusiastic or happy for the workers at all. He sounds like he just woke up. So I apologize for the monotone voice. The top wages rise by 33% when cost of living adjustments are included. Attention now turns to the other members of the Detroit Three. Similar deals at Ford and Chrysler parent Stellantis await approval. Industry watchers say the signs are that they will comfortably pass. Other automakers are racing to make their own agreements as they strive to hold on to workers. UAW chief Sean Fain has said the union will target non-unionized firms that don't lift pay. Terrified auto executives across the country are rushing to give their own employees raises in the hopes of fending off the UAW. Subaru is the latest to say it plans pay increases. The so do you hear this now? Now auto comp other auto companies are starting to give their employees an increase in pay because of what happened with the UAW strike. So see how a strike with the UAW is actually affecting other companies. Other auto dealers are like, wait a minute now, we need to go ahead and give our employees a raise so this doesn't happen to us. So this is how things like strikes can actually be affected. Japanese firm said Thursday that workers at its plant in Indiana will get hikes in line with industry levels. It didn't give a precise number. That follows similar moves at other firms using non-unionized labor, including Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai. Yeah, I'm again, I'm so sorry that gentleman is not more enthusiastic, but there's more. It's not just Toyota, uh, Subaru and Hyundai. They are at also actually looking at making some type of a deal with Tesla. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Let's get into this article here uh, from Reuters as well. It says the UAW clinches, clinches record Detroit deals turns to organizing Tesla. Foreign automakers. Now, Tesla, this is Elon Musk company. So this is really interesting. All right. The votes lock in UAW tentative agreements with the automakers through April 2028, which include a 25 percent increase in base wages and will ultimately or excuse me, cumulatively uh, raise the top wage by 33 percent, compounded with estimated cost of living adjustments over forty two dollars an hour. It is also cut the number of years needed to get to the top pay from eight years to three years, 
will boost the pay of temporary workers by 150% and make them permanent employees. And it includes significant retirement improvements. This was a big one for the temp employees because a lot of times if you're in a temp position, you actually do not have that option of doing temp to perm, right? Like more companies are more willing to hire just a temp worker instead of a temp to perm worker because once they become perm, you have to give them benefits. These are companies like trying to be cheap, of course. So this is a big improvement in reference to the temp workers. It goes on to say, um, I already read that part. Let's get to this piece here. UA, UA President uh, Sean Fain was in Washington last week to hold meetings to discuss the union's organizing strategy and is expected to outline more details in the weeks to come. Now we take our strike muscle and our fighting spirit to the rest of the industries we represent and to millions of non-union workers ready to stand up and fight for a better way of life. President Joe Biden, who has backed the UAW efforts to unionize other car makers, hailed union ratification on Monday. The UAW is fighting hard to ensure that all auto jobs are good, middle-class jobs, and I stand with them in this fight. That's really interesting considering the fact that Joe Biden wasn't willing to stand with the railroad workers. So I'm curious to hear how the railroad workers feel right now about how he responded towards them versus how he's responding towards the auto workers. Fain told Reuters last week that the UAW was getting expressions of interest in organizing from many Tesla workers. Workers at Tesla, Toyota, Honda, and others are not the enemy. They, they're the UAW members of the future. Votes in favor of the agreement from workers at some parts and component operations who stand to get substantial raises as they move to higher pay classifications outweighed votes against the contract from some veteran workers. So this is the piece that I wanted you to see. The fact that it seems like those who opposed the deal were the veteran workers. Now, some of you may wonder, why would any of them oppose the deal? If you're a veteran worker, you're already grandfathered in. You already got the most of your benefits for the most part. I wouldn't be surprised if it includes some kind of a pension. So if you're one of those veteran workers, you may get a pension. You may already have that retirement bonus. So to you, this doesn't really matter. And this is a problem that I've seen before in reference to worker solidarity. Whether you already got your benefits and you are a veteran worker, whether you were already grandfathered in, you should still support and back the current workers, the workers that came in after you that are not eligible for those same benefits that you were once eligible for. And I wanna give an example that I know of uh, personally, MIT. When I started working at MIT, you know, a, a lot of people get excited to work there because they're like, you get this pension and yada, yada. So eventually that changed. So there were people that were employed at MIT, so they qualified for the pension. Those people were already grandfathered in. Some of the hourly workers at MIT wanted to get together and fight for that same right for the other workers, the new employees. They wanted to be able to still get the pension as well. What was really interesting is, again, some of the veteran employees who already got theirs weren't interested in trying to help them in that fight. Now, that's not fair. You have to have worker solidarity. And that was something that I did notice. It's like, oh, I get it because you already got yours. You don't want to help other people who came after you get theirs. Another thing that the veteran workers got at MIT that newer workers didn't receive is they actually used to receive a cost of living raise not just the standard 2% increase, but also a cost of living raise. That was something that again, MIT decided to do away with. So it's just funny to me when I would see some people, some of the veteran workers, these are people like in their like 60s, 70s, et cetera, complain that the younger people don't wanna work hard and they don't really wanna fight for things like they did. But then at the same time, when the younger people that are coming into these, these companies and they're trying to fight for some of the same benefits that they were actually able to receive, that the, the new employees coming in have been basically rejected from, is that not considered trying to fight and work hard? So that's the thing. And a lot of times people leave these things out that like, look, like the benefits that you received when you started working here are not the same benefits 
that we're receiving when we started working here. So you got to have that worker solidarity. I can't believe they would even sit up there and try to stand against that. Auto worker, auto workers, excuse me, automakers looking to trim costs as they make the shift to electric vehicles face higher hourly labor costs. Ford has estimated the new contract will add 850 to 900 dollars in labor costs per vehicle. Ford CEO Jim Farley said the company. Uh oh, I jumped ahead. Said the company is on track to reach full production schedules for assembly plants impacted during the strike. The reality is that this labor agreement added significant cost, and we are going to have to work very hard on productivity and efficiency to become more competitive. So that's that's the UAW strike update there. So it does seem like they did get uh, what they were asking for. Again, I don't know about you guys, but I never got a 20% wage increase. Even over, you talk about over like four years, eight years, I mean, even over 10 years, because the most I think I got when I was at MIT was like the 2%. We'll give you a standard 2% increase, right? So that's huge, that's huge. In the end, it was worth it for them. Thank you for the super chat, Roger. Come out to Palestine protest in Long Island Sunday, Sabby. I, I don't know if I'll be able to do that. I already got things booked up, um, but we will see. Thank you for the super chat, uh, Sayop Shorty. Doobie doobie do. Thank you, Allie. Sally, my girlfriend loves your show. She's completely sees everything now. Free Palestine. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Eric Gray, for the super chat. All of us teachers recently voted for a pay increase and despise this. We still have more teachers quitting. And now we have 275 open instructional positions in just one county alone. Yeah. And I bet the school board is in a, in a rush to fill those positions, right? Thank you for the super chat, Vegan Goddess. I got a 20% raise in 1985. Holy smokes, Vegan Goddess. Where did you work? <laughs> Holy smokes. Thank you for the super chat, Todd. Note, expiration on May Day 2028. Fain is planning bigger labor-wide moves later with other industries. First time hopeful for labor in a long time. There you go. See, I was wrong about uh, Fane. He actually had, he was looking at the bigger picture and he actually did have a longer plan in mind. And I think that's really awesome. And shout out to Maria Romero for becoming a savvy member. Let's give Maria a big whoop, whoop. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Eric said it's a back to the future race. There you go. <laughs> oh man. 